Hello humans and future AI overlords. I have wanted to understand more about the history of artificial intelligence. So I am going to basically ask a few questions and see if I can learn a little bit more about artificial intelligence. So we'll start with the basic question, what is artificial intelligence? So yeah, so branch of computer science, creates intelligent agents, systems that can reason, learn, and act autonomously. Um, there's been a lot of research, so the different types of AI, machine learning, natural language processing, computer vision, three types of AI. It is a growing field, it is an exciting field. It's gonna revolutionize our lives absolutely. Like, it's, it's blowing my mind the more I learn about it. Um, so here are some current and potential applications of AI. So self-driving cars, you know, we're, we're kind of aware uh, of that. It's kind of uh, science fiction made real and amazing. Virtual assistants, you know, many people have their Alexa, their Siri. Um, you know, I used to be a big Cortana person. I'm now a big Google Assistant person. I love Google Assistant. Um, medical diagnosis, uh, I think that's uh, a, a, an amazing thing to be able to help doctors and nurses, you know, get access to information to make better diagnosis, uh, fraud detection. So yeah, preventing financial crimes and scams and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's kind of, you know, crazy with, uh, you know, people want to use AI to defraud people. Uh, we've got to use AI to combat that. Uh, product recommendations. So yeah, I know, I know Amazon is working on trying to make the um, reviews better, make them easier to find, and also get those fake reviews off there. Because I think that, that sometimes is, uh, you know, uh, you're like, wait, where did this review come? It does not seem relevant at all. But there are some great reviews on Amazon. Um, so what are the origins of artificial intelligence? So origins can be traced back to ancient times uh, when philosophers and inventors began to explore the possibility of creating machines that could think and act like humans. Well, that's cool. I mean, I guess it makes sense. You know, I mean, this is not... Um, you know, but the modern field um, began in the 50s, okay, the 1950s. So the early computer programs were previously thought to be only possible for humans. Um, so one of the most important figures in early history was Alan Turing, a Br British mathematician. I did reference him in an earlier video, which is considered to be the father of theoretical computer science. Uh, in a 1950 paper, uh, 1950 paper, computer, computing machinery and intelligence, Turing proposed a test determine whether a machine could be considered intelligent. Um, this is a test now known as the Turing test. Um, and I used some Turing-like questions in a previous video to look at asking the three different main chatbots out there, um, you know, their responses. And it was a very illuminating experience. Um, other important co contributors, um, John McCarthy, Marvin Minsky, Claude Shannon, these research developed basic concepts, concepts and techniques that are still used today, such as machine learning, natural language processing, computer vision, so those three concepts. Um, and then in the 60s and 70s, AI made significant pro progress, but also faced some setbacks. That's interesting. Biggest challenges was that AI systems were often very inefficient and could not scale to large problems. Uh, I'm guessing that was a lot of our limitations on computing. Another challenge was that AI researchers were not always able to agree on the best way to approach a problem. So, you know, and that's what I find interesting is, um, you know, the approaches and, you know, that, that I think what's been really illuminating to people is these emergent behaviors that were like unanticipated. So, um, and, and that some of the approaches that were taken, they weren't sure would work. Uh, so it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of amazing. Uh, but anyway, so in the 1980s, AI research entered a period of decline. Uh, funding dried up. Many researchers became delusioned in the field. Well, that's a bummer. Uh, but then AI research made a comeback in the 90s, advanced the computer hardware and software. Uh, in, in recent years, AI uh, has made even more progress with new, new techniques with deep learning, um, different types of machine learning, artificial neural networks to learn from the data. Um, neural networks modeled on the human brain. That's super cool. Um, so today, AI is used in a wide variety of applications. And this is what they talked about, self-driving cars, you know, medical diagnosis, virtual assistance. So, so here's a timeline of key events. So this is perfect. So 1950, Alan Turing proposed a Turing test. 1956, Dartmouth Summer Research Project on 
artificial intelligence. Oh, okay. So of course, universities, you know, the, you know, the, the key institutions in, uh, uh, you know, in a lot of development of, of technology. Uh, John McCarthy coins the term artificial intelligence in 1957. Okay. And then Marvin Minsky, Seymour Papert published Perceptrons, ooh, which lays the foundation of neural networks. Okay. Um, Edward Feigenbaum introduces expert systems. Um, the Lighthill Report is published in 1980, criticizes the state of AI research. Uh, Deep Blue, uh, 1997, defeats Gary Kaspar Kasparov, uh, the grandmaster in a chess match, which was like huge. Um, you know, I mean, to, to, you know, to see that. Um, 2012, so that's a big leap um, uh, in time. Alex Nett, a deep learning system, which amounted with, with ImageNet large scale visual recognition channel. So I'm guessing this is image recognition. And then 2016, AlphaGo, a deep learning system, defeats Lisa Dahl in the game of Go. And Go is a much more complex game than chess. So, you know, like when you think of some of the, you know, the research they did around games, you know, I, I remember they were, they were developing AIs to play Pong and make it, you know, make it beat matches in Pong, you know, uh, that old Atari game, very simple, you know, uh, kind of like a, a ping pong type. Uh, computer game, and then you know, uh, you know, doing chess, and then and and then now and then doing Go, and just getting ever complex games um, being developed. So that is um, that is fantastic. So I have another question. I want to talk about more about like the dive a little bit deeper into how AI has evolved. So I'm going to ask, how has AI evolved over time? So it's giving us that timeline that we had before, uh, which, you know, which is good. You know, starting in the '50s and up to 2016. Um, you know, then it talked about you know some of the, the the resurgence in deep learning, and then some of the examples that we talked about earlier. So it's you know kind of feeding us uh, back some of those things. But some of the new pieces are there's just a few of them anyways. AI is being used today. AI can use to develop, and we're seeing more innovative and beneficial applications. So. Data availability. AI systems need a large amount of data to, to trade on. This can be difficult and expansive to collect. Um, so these are the challenges, data availability. Bias, which of course, yes, is a huge problem. If an AI learning system learn, I mean, it learns something from biased data set, then it's going to treat, it's going to continue that, that bad biased behavior that leads to discrimination and, and, and other uh, issues. And then interpretability, it's often difficult to understand how AI makes systems make decisions. This is difficult to trust these systems to ensure that people, that to ensure that they are behaving ethically. So, yeah, so if an AI system, I mean, AI system only, is only as good as it's trained when it, when it learns, you know, if, just like if it were to learn an object is incorrect, like it, 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 it you know, someone labeled pictures of a, of, of a car uh, as a plane, you know, it's going to, you know, and you want it to analyze, you know, cars and planes, it's going to, it's going to have bad data in there. So it's only as good as the data that it's, it's trained on the data that it has knowledge of, um, and then the reinforcement learning and all that kind of stuff, the neural network uh, uh, learning that it, it does with that with that information. So that's very that's very interesting. So I know the the evolution was a little bit. So let's I'm going to ask it some important milestones. I know that we've got a few, but I want to explicitly ask it about milestones um, in AI history, just to see if it flushes out any more detail. So, 1950 Alley Turn, the Dartmouth Summer. So basically, it's giving us the same core milestones we had before. Um, so, and then I'm going to ask it, you know, what are the main um, applications of AI? Which uh, let's see if it just kind of regurgitates the same stuff that it's shared with us. Um, so, virtual assistants, medical detection, fraud detection, product recommendations, self-driving cars, customer ser customer service. Yeah, I know they talked about like call centers and things being like replaced, you know, like with AI. Um, education, you know, I know it's massively impacting education, students using AI to create papers and, you know, but, but it's also being used for good, not just to, you know, to skirt around getting homework done, but to, you know, imagine a kid that's using AI to write a paper about something, to learn about it, and using AI not just to write the paper, but to learn how to use AI to write a new paper about something. It's it's very different. I mean, I know people talk about plagiarism, they talk about using technology and to not learn, but I think there are ways to, to use these AI tools to reinforce learning 
Um, you know, and, you know, and it's one of those things like, you know, what does it mean to be intelligent today when you have intelligent systems with you, which I think is a, you know, a deeper question, you know, but, um, so, so basically it's kind of, you know, asking us the same things before. So one of the things that it, you know, that, you know, that it, it, it had referenced, uh, was bias and there's like kind of an issue around ethical considerations about how we use these tools. So let's look at what it thinks about what are the ethical considerations surrounding AI? Okay, so you know it's um, you know, rapidly developing revolution re revolution in the aspects of our lives. So bias privacy is a huge issue. You've got these large data sets and you know people are finding personal data inside of data sets, you know personal pictures and things like that. So it's interesting how these data sets are created and what to, to what degree are they are they um, you know are they private? Uh, transparency, that whole black box mentality of not understanding you know how these systems, uh, you know, reason, you know, can they explain how they came to the decision that they made? You know, can they, you know, can they make that reasoning transparent? Because it's one of those things like about learning, you know, you can, you can teach someone something and they, you know, the, you know, they, you can teach someone something, but if you can get them to understand the reasoning behind it, the proof, the rules, the, you know, the, the things to consider, the questions behind the questions, I think that's, one of these things that you know that um, AI systems should be able to tell you how it got there. Um, you know, uh, so control who will control the AI systems. You know, I mean, right now, I mean, it's definitely large corporations. Um, you know, but there's people building their own. I mean, there's people you know with you know uh, where you can build your own little mini you know um, systems and stuff like that. Something I plan to do uh, uh, that I'm working on trying to figure out like what's the right way to make that happen. Because um, I want to have that experience of, of you know, kind of building one and, and, and learning about, you know, how, how it could benefit me and personalize it and stuff like that. But safety. So AI systems could potentially, could potentially be used to harm people, for example, it could be used to develop autonomous weapons or spread mis misinformation. That is a huge concern. And, um, you know, I know that a lot of these AI systems are, you know, like for AI imagery, they're embedding in the image that this was created by an AI system. So, um, you know, but then... I mean, there's ways, to, you know, to, uh, to get around that kind of stuff. And people are going to figure out ways to get, get around these limitations, which is, you know, which is uh, a challenge, particularly if it's, you know, if there's really, you know, bad, um, you know, bad actors in the world using these tools for it to do harm. Uh, is probably my number one fear, um, you know, so uh, meaning. So what does it mean to be human in the age of AI? Like, this is a huge question. I mean, as AI becomes more sophisticated, it's possible that we will begin to blur the lines between humans and machines. This raises a number of philosophical questions about the nature of consciousness and the meaning of life. Now, I mean, I know there's been lots of talk about, you know, it are, you know, about, um, you know, the, you know, the human, you know, the, the, you know, AIs and their sentience and things like that. Um, you know, but it, I, I, you know, and I, and I know that there is debate about that partially because we can't define sentience and lots of people have different definitions of it. And, you know, uh, but what, but when we think about what does it mean to be human in an age of AI, I feel like that is a profound question that I definitely want to explore more deeply. Um, you know, how these tools, you know, how we learn, how do we learn these tools? How do we partner with these tools? How how will we be impacted in our work and relationships and online and technology and tools. I mean, there's amazing possibilities that we, we go down a road of, to utopia, uh, you know, of, of incredible new uh, possibilities for humanity, um, you know, uh, but sadly there's there are people that want to take advantage. They, you know, they're, 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 you know, kind of locked into like legacy mindsets about the way things should work, um, you know, you know, but I understand there's a lot of, uh, emotions around this, um, and and it's important to 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 think about them, to, to to address them personally, to think about what they mean. I know it's hard sometimes to uh, for people to hold a different perspective in their mind, to see things th through the eyes of other people, to step into someone else's shoes, you know, and, and think about this. But I think um, there's 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 so much potential. There's so much good that can come out of this. You know, I'd hate to see that goodness be stunted by people, by, by fears. Um, you know, if we can figure out ways to, you know, to monitor and manage the guardrails up and things like that to prevent bad use of the technology, you know, but this can really empower humanity, which is exciting. So, so here's some things that can be done to address ethical considerations on AI. So ensure AI systems are transparent, 
This means making it clear how AI systems make decisions, how they are programmed. This will build trust and ensure these systems behave actively. I know that, you know, I mean, the AI systems out there, the ones that I use, they do always talk about, you know, uh, you know even at the bottom of the screen, BARD may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. You know, all the tools that, that I've ever used are very transparent about, hey, I may not get it right, you know, and I think that's important. So please, you know, just with all things on the internet and information, you know, um, cross check and validate, you know, and I know that's harder to do. And that's, it's, you know, that's, that's why, you know, some of the AI systems provide links to the information that's relevant to what they're presenting, which I think is really helpful. Anyway, uh, predict, you know, protecting privacy. This means ensuring AI systems do not collect or store personal data without the consent of the individual. This data should only be used for purposes for which it was collected. And I absolutely agree. And I think privacy and AI, you know, that's another topic to, to really delve more deeply in. Understanding what these tools capture as part of using them. Um, understanding, you know, where the data comes that that they're that they're uh, being trained on. Um, understanding um, in the current usage is that being used as part of additional training. Uh, to what degree does it capture your information, your personal information, um, you know, and is how is that used? Um, so um, developing ethical guidelines for AI. This means creating a set of principles that AI systems should follow. These principles should be based on fundamental ethical values such as fairness, non-discrimination, and respect for human rights. So I know that there have been, there was like a blueprint from the White House uh, that I, I did a little video on that was about you know these principles. They had amazing people and, and institutions and companies involved in that blueprint. I know they're working really hard towards understanding. I know that AI companies want to be regulated, which is like huge, and they want to help the government understand the technology so they can set regulation rules that actually make a difference. Um, you know, so um, educating the public about AI. So this means raising awareness of the ethical considerations surrounding AI and ensuring that people are able to make informed decisions about how this technology is used. So um, educating the public about AI, AI it's interesting because when I talk with people about it, they're aware of it. And there's usually, um, you know, uh, a slant towards um, it's either, oh, this is really cool and interesting or, oh, my gosh, this is going to destroy the world, you know, or, you know, or there's like kind of a head in the sand, you know, kind of ignoring it. I'm not really exploring it kind of a thing. So it's, it's really interesting seeing how people respond, um, you know, to the, to the um, uh, technology. But my hope, it, like for me in this YouTube channel, I want to explore it and learn about it and share my thoughts and perspectives to hopefully inspire you to explore and you know learn the tools and technology and explore it in ways that are relevant to you. So um, uh, I want to actually ask the, the question about uh, how does AI impact our daily lives? Because that's something that I feel like, you know, if we don't understand how it impacts us in what we do daily, everyday activities. How can it make our lives better? How is it impacting us? So, all right, so it's bringing up a lot of the things that's mentioned before, virtual assistants, self-driving cars, fraud detection, product recommendations, medical diagnosis, customer service, education, and manufacturing. AI is being used to automate tasks in manufacturing. So that's one additional thing. Um, so there are a few, there are just a few, these are just a few of the many ways AI is impacting our daily lives today. You know, research is continuing. Here's potential impacts. So in the second list is AI powered devices will become more commonplace. We ex expect to see more and more AI powered devices in our homes, cars, and workplaces. These devices may learn our preferences and habits. They'll be able to help us with tasks in a more personalized way. So this is an example of, you know, AI being integrated into our tools. Google I.O., they talked about how they're integrating AI into the software. And they've been doing this forever, but they're making it more visible. Microsoft is doing massive work to uh, integrate AI into their systems and in a lot of the tools they use, like their Microsoft 365, you know, the office, uh, you know, tools online, those tools are being, you know, uh, are going to have Copilot added in. They've done that stuff with, you know, with their GitHub developer tools. Um, you know, they're doing stuff with their, you know, with their Azure uh, data backends, you know, with AI tools uh, for developers. Uh, so it's, you know, but for everyday users, we're going to see a lot of these tools integrate. Um, you know, I was really excited, you know, inside of Gmail being able to, um, you know, input, uh, you know, do some input about, you know, uh, an email I wanted to send. I wanted to reconnect with an old friend and it actually let me input that and then create a template and then I just edited the template and it was great because it was personal. You know, it was relevant. It was, you know, I had to, you know, 
I had to edit it and make it like real, but it gave me some a place to start. You know, sometimes I have a hard time like, where do I start with this email? You know, I haven't talked to, you know, I haven't talked to him in a long time, and I really want to reconnect. But how do we do it in a way that, you know, um, just gets you going? You know, so that, I think that's really helpful. So uh, AI will be used to improve our health. That's the second uh, bullet. So AI will be used to develop new treatments for diseases. I think that is fantastic that they're using AI to do research on different ways to help fight disease, um, you know, and illness and stuff like that. So be used to monitor our health and provide us with personalized advice. So I'm a big Apple Watch uh, user. I love my Apple Watch and I love, you know, you know, tracking, you know, my, you know, closing my rings every day and stuff like that. It's, it gives me, you know, it, you know, it gives me advice, you know, to keep, uh, to keep, you know, moving, to keep active, to keep physical, you know, meeting the goals that I want, you know, um, that I set for myself. Um, you know, all right, third bullet point, AI will be used to create new jobs. AI will create new jobs in the areas of software development, data science, and customer service. However, it will displace some jobs as machine learning becomes capable of doing tasks were, that were previously done by humans. And this is where, like Microsoft talks about, you know, mundane tasks that can be automated, can be, you know, can be done. You know, a lot, I mean, a lot of the data entry stuff, they're taking data, like some of my biggest pet peeves is you're re-entering data that exists somewhere. If you can use automation tools to grab that data and move it into a different system, I mean, why not? Why not save that valuable time to do something, you know, more uh, meaningful, you know, in, in, in what you're doing uh, daily with your work? You know, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, just, you know, I mean, there are times I do like, you know, kind of simple tasks I can do. Just get me, gets me sort of in this like making stuff happen, doing something kind of mode. But a lot, but most of the time, I really don't want to be doing that kind of stuff. So, uh, so, so learning how to implement automation and how to use these tools to simplify things you do, I think it's going to be really, really incredible. Um, but it's going to be change. You know, our jobs are going to change. What we focus on is going to change. You know, um, and, and we've got to learn how to be prepared for that. So, so AI will change the way we interact with the world around us. So that is massive. And it's, I mean, our, our technology has, imp has really changed the way we interact with the world. You know, when I'm uh, on my balcony, I'm looking out over kind of like, you know, seeing people walking around. I see so many people with their smartphones in front of their faces or walking their dog or they're, or they're just, you know, they're just walking. Um, you know, I feel like it's rare to see people with their phone in their pocket talking to the person or walking their dog focused on their dog or observing their surroundings. It's kind of, it's kind of incredible. So, um, you know, technology is changing what we see in the world. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Google Maps and getting places. And if I don't follow Google Maps, I get stuck and, you know, find accidents and my you know, travel time becomes greatly impacted. Uh, but, but what it's saying here is AI will change the way we interact with the world around us. AI will change the way we interact with around us. We will be able to use AI to control our devices with our voices. We'll be able to use AI to get information and assistance from anywhere in the world. So we're kind of doing that today. A lot of AI systems are behind the scenes doing that for us. But as we see AI systems go to the forefront and be more, uh, you know, uh, be a co-pilot for us in the world, I think it's going to be absolutely incredible what we uh, where we go from here. And I think you know it it it, it 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 it's saying right here the future of AI is very promising. It has the potential to revolutionize many aspects of our lives. I totally believe in that. Um, so let's let's look at current challenges, limitations of AI, and see what it says. So what are the current challenges and limitations of AI? So it's it's you know, bringing bringing up the you know key challenges the data availability the bias interpretability you know that's understanding the reasoning behind the system safety security and, and hacking the system is definitely important um, scalability uh, you know th th that was kind of a reference historically being a challenge to scale um, and then creativity so AI systems are not yet as creative as humans there's a limitation for many applications such as writing and art now now i have used the ai systems to to create like i've used dolly 2 and i've used the the bing image uh generator that uses uh dolly 2 behind the scenes and i and i love them because i use them to create the thumbnails for the videos um because i think they you know they can create images that have never existed i mean these things that you're having being th these things that are being created are unique and that is kind of amazing. So, um, but it's that partnership with the creativity of humans and the intelligence of, of the AI to come together. So, um, you know, but uh, I know that these AI systems are, are, are getting more intelligent, more creative. You know, I played around with Midjourney. It did some beautiful, beautiful things. The logo for 
um, you know, um, for uh, this channel is generated in mid-journey, uh, which I love. Uh, but anyway, so despite these challenges, the future of AI is very promising. Here are some things that can be done to address the challenges and limitations. So developing better algorithms. So it will be interesting to see how AI can be used to improve AI. Collecting more data, and this is that whole issue of, you know, privacy and security and stuff like that. So collecting more data to provide um, AI systems with to make better decisions, less biased decisions, that's important. Making AI systems more transparent, we already talked about that. Developing ethical guidelines for AI, and that's something that we as humans, and we as you know, you know, communities, and we as uh, you know, um, institutions of different shapes and sizes need to have guidelines in what we're doing and how we create these systems. Uh, investing in security, so you know, protection uh, from the being hacked or manipulated. Developing more creative AI systems. So, I mean, you know, and the work being done to, you know, in, in research of this, I mean, I, I love it. I feel like it's on fire now. The investment, the focus, you know, um, is, is, is massive. Um, and so now I feel like, you know, I was kind of hinting at this earlier, but, you know, like how can individuals prepare for the future of AI? And it's a future that's here. That's the thing that I think people don't understand is that AI is impacting us now. I mean, it's been impacting us for, for decades. But now it is, it's the next era. It is so much more impactful. Just the rise of OpenAI's ChatGPT, you know, in December of last year, you know, Dolly prior, prior to that, all these new AI systems and tools and the prol prol proliferation of them. Um, you know, artificial intelligence is rapidly evolving. It's important for individuals to prepare for the future of AI. So here's some things that individuals can do to prepare. So learn about AI. The first step to preparing for the future of AI is to learn about it. So there are many resources available online. I've, I've hinted at a few, and I'm, I'm, I'm learning about more resources, and I'm using them as well to, to try and learn. Um, developing skills in data science and programming. Now, now these may be not things that you specifically, you don't have a career in it, so maybe you don't want those, but maybe just having some, you know, some high-level understanding you know, of some of the concepts of AI. You know, being open to change. I mean, like that, that's massive. I mean, I know, I mean, you know, uh, you know it's, it's, Amazing to me, you know, working with people, how they fear change, how they fear things they don't understand, um, you know, and it, it amazes me how, how people's minds are closed in so many different ways, and I, and I don't, I don't understand why that is. It's something I've, I've actually talked with um, different AI tools about to understand, like, what drives that behavior? How can you connect with people to, to deal with that, to make them more open, you know, but I mean, you can't make anyone do something, but... Anyway, the future of AI is uncertain, and, and I know uncertainty is a, is a problem, you know, um, but it's clear that AI will have a major impact on our lives. It is already. It is important to be open to change and be willing to adapt to new technologies. Now, what I think is interesting is um, we've been adapting to, to new technology, you know, for decades and decades, and it's it seems to be ramping up and speeding up and getting more challenging. But what I think is important is that... Um, a lot of these technologies now are learning to how to adapt to us. So, you know, they're not just evolving the, evolving the technology, they're evolving the technology to be customizable to us as humans in the way we work. And in that we work very differently, you know, different roles and different types of jobs and different ways of working. You know, if the AI tools can allow people to work in the flow of the work that they do and leverage the technology in a way that is more aligned with how they work and more effective, you know, um, it's, you know, I think that'll be useful. And I'm, I'm hoping, you know, but it's, it's, it's a two-way thing. The technology has got to get better at being adaptable to human ways of interacting and humans still have to be adaptable to, to change and open to it. Um, networking with people who are working in AI. Um, so this is going to learn more about AI, meet people who can help you in your career. I mean, um, there are lots of, you know, there are lots of people, you know, probably in your place of business there, you know, there, there could be, you know, your kids, extended family, your parents, you know, you know, that have backgrounds in this or, or have been exposed to it or have even just played around with the technology and have experiences that you can learn from. So, you know, I think the thing is just to talk about it with your, with, with the people you talk to and get their thoughts and perspective you know, uh, get involved in AI projects. So for me, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to learn about AI and I wanted to, uh, you know, I feel like I wanted to share that knowledge with people in the hope that maybe it could benefit someone. Uh, but I know it's a way for me to learn by teaching and learn by sharing. So this is kind of important to me as well. 
Um, so um, let's see here. So I want to. So one of the things I'm going to add with my last question, and it's probably going to regurgitate stuff, but let's see what it says. It's what are the future possibilities and risks of AI? And this is both you know positive and negative. Um, you know, it's, I feel like you have to think. You have to look at the pros and the cons. So it's you know, rapidly developing, you know, potential possibilities, improved healthcare, improved, improved productivity, you know, making automating tasks, getting work done faster, you know, you know, less, less drudgery kind of stuff, you know, getting done uh, in an automated fashion. Sustainable development, AIs can be used to optimize resources, reduce waste, and help us with more sustainability. That is going to be, I mean, I feel like huge. If it can help us learn to use resources better, then we won't fight over them. If it can help us to learn to use resources that are less impactful to the planet, if it can help us to learn to, to, to discover ways to leverage resources that, you know, that, that are more plentiful um, or more, um, you know, or resources that, you know, are, are, are able to be recreated to, to you know, um, I think that is a massive change. I mean, we've been talking about sustainability for a long time. You know, but it feels like we're not doing enough. You know, um, at least you know what 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 I see in the news and what you you hear from you know different like climate scientists and and different you know news articles about you know uh, climate conferences and stuff like that. It feels like we're not doing enough. So maybe AI can help us uh, improve decision making. AI can be used to analyze large amounts of data, identify patterns that humans might not be able to see. This can help us make better decisions. Everything to business to government. So improved decision making is absolutely. I mean, our minds. I mean, I know for myself. I have limits on what I can comprehend. I have limits in how deep I can think about things. Uh, the connections that go on in my brain aren't instantaneous. They take time to to develop. You know, I mean, you know, through training and stuff. Just like these AIs need to be trained, but they learn at a speed that's just, you know, phenomenal. And they retrain, they retain that knowledge and uh, evolve it and improve it. You know, um, you know. So I'm excited about. Uh, you know, that improved decision making, um, you know, and being able to identify patterns, you know, there's so many things that humans will assume is happening because they don't have that deeper thinking skills. Um, and I've experienced that where I remember I used IBM Watson system to do some analysis around uh, a previous position. And some of the thinking around leaders in that in that job were thinking about how uh, behaviors were happening that was so, I mean, like in my mind, I'm like, wow, you really believe like, like in my mind, I was like, why do you think that? And they, they thought it because in their mind, in the way they, what they thought what's possible in their levels of thinking that they could do and their understanding, you know, but now you can put, uh, you know, an AI into that to can think, think way deeper and develop deeper connections, have a larger data set than that human had can get to, and we were able to get to real drivers of what was causing the problem and it, and it and it was a challenge for the people to hear it because it countered their you know what they thought as a human and this is where sometimes i feel like that reasoning behind the decisions that ai's make needs to be there because human thinking and ai thinking and making those you know making those uh, uh clear connections of how they got there to allow the human to understand is like critical so new forms of creativity ai can be used Great. new ideas and solutions can lead to innovation and this whole idea of, of AI becoming creative and self-learning and evolving and getting to you know uh, 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 getting us to an artificial general intelligence that can also then get us to an artificial super intelligence you know that can deal with really complex problems you know I mean it, I think it's going to be it's going to be incredible um, anyway some potential risks so job displacement as AI has become more sophisticated it's possible it will displace some jobs this could lead to increased unemployment and social unrest. So, and this is where, you know, this is where AI, you know, people with AI will replace people that don't know AI. I mean, that is kind of an obvious thing. So, you know, so learn the tools, learn what's possible, look at what you do and think about ways it could be improved if you had some tools. And that would be a way to, to ride the wave of change instead of, you know, have the wave just wash over you. A bias, AI systems can be biased, reflecting biases that are present in the data they're trained on. This can lead to discrimination. I know that's something I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, analysis of systems, you know, with testing for bias can be done to analyze those systems and ensure that we're not, you know, I mean, the power of these systems is for us to, to rise, to raise our intelligence above the human limitations, to give us knowledge of some of our better selves. I mean, it's it, they're training on us, what we know, our human knowledge, but we're trying to get the best of us, 
you know, the best of our knowledge. You know, you want those Einsteins, you want those Steve Jobs, you want those, you know, uh, Bill Gates, you want those, you know, uh, Margaret Atwood, the, the famous, you know, the, you know these, these, these famous people, profound, you know, uh, people that made a human, you know, Martin Luther King, and you know, you want these, uh, you know, the, these intelligences uh, to be uh, reflecting um, the best of humanity. The intelligence, the you know, the the higher intelligence, the better decisions, you know. Um, so anyway, so another risk is loss of control. AI systems could be so powerful that humans could lose control of them. This could lead to a situation where AI systems can make decisions that are harm, harmful to humanity. Now, yes, and and that's you know, I mean, in, been ingrained you know in us you know watching the Terminator. Um, you know, watching The Matrix, you know, watching Tron, you know, like some of my favorite movies are sort of this, you know, reflecting the situation of humanity versus, you know, humanity versus, you know, systems and AI and stuff like that. And, um, you know, so, and that's a legitimate concern, you know, when these systems get really, um, you know, beca can become, uh, you know, and have access to control systems and things like that that could impact humanity. That's definitely a risk and people need to think about that, um, you know, but, that, you know, our electric grid, our, you know, our, our power systems, you know, a lot of the, you know, water systems, you know, um, there's lots of, you know, lots of things that we, we need to make sure we're protecting, not just from AI, but just from, you know, cyber attacks and stuff like that. A lot of these um, issues that we're, we're dealing with are not just issues of AI, but are issues of, you know, of, of protection, you know, protecting us from, from, from hackers and stuff like that. So anyway, cyber warfare, oh, that's the next thing. So AI can be used to develop autonomous weapons, could be used in cyber warfare. This could lead to new arms race and increased risk of conflict. And yes, it feels like an AI cyber warfare seems like, you know, because there's already been like Stuxnet and different, you know, um, you know, weapons that have been created, you know, by, by different uh, institutions, you know, to, you know, to, to deal with, you know, you know, nuclear arms race and, you know, things like that. Um, so I definitely feel like that that's definitely a risk. Um, you know, and my hope is that, you know, I guess, I mean, and, and this, I mean, this is a hard one because it's, you know, who's got the bigger, more powerful AI that can, you know, you know, can, can, you know, can protect you and, 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 you know, but also, you know, not, um, you know, not let people harm, you know, other people, you know, it's, it's going to be really, it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, where that goes, you know, a technology that has, you know, has always been, uh, it seemed like, you know, uh, been like at least in the late, you know, last few decades, you know, highly used in a lot of different ways uh, around espionage and, and cyber attacks and stuff like that. So uh, definitely a, a huge risk. Um, existential risk. Some experts believe that AI could pose an existential risk to humanity. This means AI could develop in a way that leads to the destruction of humanity. Now, existential risk. I've never heard that. I mean, I understand existential risk, but so if an AI were to basically say, hey, humanity is the problem, let's get rid of humanity. I mean, that's, that is definitely frightening. I, I mean, I would hope that, you know, in our partnership with AI, you know, that, that we want to be better. We want humanity to be better. We want an AI to help us make better decisions, you know, make, make better decisions, human to human, human to earth, you know, human to AI, you know, um, so hopefully, you know, those alignment rules that, that will be put in around AIs will have those limitations to, to limit those risks, but, but, but help us help ourselves when we can't, when, I mean, because clearly there's things that we're just not good at getting better at, but we need to get better at. Climate change is critical. Uh, but anyway, um, so it's important to be aware of both potential possibilities and risks of AI. By understanding these, we can help ensure that AI is used for good and it does not pose a threat to humanity. Here's some things that can be done to mitigate the risk of AI. De develop ethical guidelines, which we talked about for AI. Invest in security. Educate the public about AI. Help them understand the potential risk and be aware of how to mitigate them. And develop in uh, international agreements. I know there was, there's been work done, done on that recently, right? International agreements. So, you know... Um, Learning about AI and learning about the possibilities and learning how to use it for good and then understanding what the risks are, understanding how those risks are being mitigated. I think that's something that we definitely need to, I definitely need to do, I need to learn some more about, but I think it's something that we, we all, um, you know, can learn from, you know, to some degree. I mean, 
there is definitely an emotional response to AI. You know, some of it's great, some of it's positive, some of it's negative, some of it's fearful, some of it's everything in between. You know, we're humans, we feel things. This is a profound change in our lives. Um, but I think by exploring these questions, you know, we can gain a better understanding of the history, impact, and future implications of artificial intelligence. Anyway, thank you very much for, uh, you know, for your time today. Um, I'll see you next time.